We're going to take a look at a new NAS unit from Ugreen, and this unit has the exact ports that I want on a NAS, and it's a really good price right now. So what I'm going to do is tell you about that first. They're doing some kind of a special. You can get 40% off. Now, this is going to be a flash sale from 326 to 327, so watch for that 40% off. If you're going to grab it, make sure you grab it right then. Um, and then we have several different NAS units to choose from. This is not even on Kickstarter yet, so I have an early unit. Now, this is an overview, not a full-on review, because this is an early unit, and the hardware may be final but there's going to be new stuff coming to the software, some new apps and all kinds of cool things. I'll wait until then before I do like any kind of full reviews. If you haven't heard of Ugreen, they've been around since 2012 and they've made all kinds of different products, as you can see here. And now they've decided to release a range of network attached storage units. So you're looking at their NAS Sync series right here. So the one I have is the DXP4800 Plus. You get one more core with the DXP4800 Plus and a couple more threads. See, five cores, six threads versus four cores, four threads. If you're going to be running VMs and stuff, then go for this one. This one came with eight gigabytes of DDR5, and it's really easy to upgrade. I'll show you that in just a second. Some storage on this NAS is 96 terabytes. So here's what I really like about this the ports. I've seen a lot of different units that are kind of in this price range. They're made for home users, home office, home lab, and a lot of them come with a one gigabit port or a 2.5 gigabit port, or they'll give you an option for like extra money to add in a card for 10 gigabit, and that's usually a lot more money. This one, comes with two ethernet ports on the back. One is a 10 gigabit that will also work at 2.5 or one gigabit. And then the other one will do 2.5 gigabit or of course one gigabit if that's the switch and the router that you have. I really like to see that because I've got my entire place wired up for 2.5 gigabit ethernet. Uh, now I wish I had it wired up for 10 gig ethernet. My other NAS units don't have 10 gigabit. They've just got 2.5, but now it's like this has 10. Otherwise we also have two USB 2.0 ports in the back and that's gonna be for mice, keyboards, whatever you wanna plug in there. We've got a USB 3.0 2.2 on the back and an HDMI. Above that we have a nice magnetic mesh screen to help keep the dust out of the system with the Ugreen logo on it. You take that off and clean it, it's very easy because it's magnetic. Now on the front we have four SATA drive bays and I have four hard drives to put in here. I've got four of the four terabyte Western Digital Red drives. These are NAS drives. So thanks to Ugreen for sending those over for testing purposes. It was extremely easy to install and I didn't need any tools. These sleds are very very easy to install. There's no play. They don't, they're not flimsy. Um, the sliding in and out was really smooth and easy. So built really, really well. It feels solid all the way around. So that's something I've noticed every time I've picked it up. It's like, this thing feels really solid. Also on the front, we have an SD card slot, USB type C and another USB type A right there. They've built this so that the RAM and the M.2 are accessible without having to like get into the innards. There's a metal panel that comes off. So it comes with one stick of memory and there's an empty slot already. So you could just add another stick and double up to 16 without much hassle. By the way, the DDR5 on this is 4,800 megahertz. And then if you wanted to go all the way to 64, you'd obviously have to remove that and then put in 232 gigabyte sticks, but that's gonna be depending upon what you're doing. I found with eight gigabytes, all the stuff that I'm doing, throwing photos on there and stuff, it's been extremely snappy. I don't have 10 gigabit ethernet. I just have to test this with 2.5 gigabit. 10 gig is gonna be about four times as fast as that. And as you can see here, I'm transferring all the footage that I shot of this Ugreen, which is, you know, not quite six gigabytes, but close. And it took 25 seconds to transfer almost six gigabytes. Let's try all that again with a one gigabit connection and just see how fast it is. And you can see that exact same footage took a minute and 14 seconds to transfer. 25 seconds versus a minute and 14 seconds. And it was getting like upwards of 260, 280 uh, megabytes per second there on the transfers with the 2.5 gigabit ethernet. This can go much higher because it also has the 10 gigabit. If you're running with the MVME M.2 SSDs, it can theoretically get up to 1250 megabytes a second. I don't have anything to test that, but um, that's what they show me with their testing. So let's jump in and check out the, the actual software. So as you can see here, I'm just using the software to access the, the Ugreen. You can use a local account or you can set up a Ugreen cloud account. Now I'm just gonna use a local account because that's how I like to do it, but you can do you. And when you first turn it on, you could just do a LAN search to look for it. And I was like, where's that drive? Oh, there it is. It tells you the IP address. You can just put this into your browser and then you can connect to it that way. It's really easy. I use both and this is pretty much the exact same experience, but it's, I don't know, it's, it looks really clean. I like it. So when you first start it up, you're gonna to wanna to click over here on your notification center and just see if there's any updates. It'll tell you like, oh, there's a system update. Now I'll walk through a few of these things with you. The first thing I like to do is just check out the control panel and see what we're working with. We've got our user management right here and our user groups. So you can set up groups and multiple users and then give those all different permissions so that only certain users can see certain things or certain you know files, certain shares. Here's all your file services. If you're using Windows, you're gonna to wanna to turn this on so you can map some network drives. We have FTP, NFS, rsync, webdav, 
and then all this as well. Now, if you wanna set up a just a custom domain name so you don't have to remember the IP, you can do that here, and then you can access it locally just by going to ugreen.local or any word you want right there, just put it in. Here's your remote access if you wanna be able to access this when you're away from home. Well, you can sign up with Ugreen and use a Ugreen account to link to this, and then, then you'll be able to access your NAS remotely through their service, or you can do it all yourself as well. This is usually the way I like to do it with DDNS, but it allows you to use your own domain name. So you can have like nas.yourdomainname.com, and that'll come right here, and you can access it from the airport or while you're traveling or whatever. I'm going to go ahead and create a storage pool here. We can select our RAID type. I've got four disks in there. We're going to do RAID 5 for that. And then I'm going to select all four of my disks. I'm not going to do a test on these, but if you've got some older disks you're putting in here, I would recommend doing this. It can take a few days, as you can see here, but I don't think I'm going to need to do that with these brand new Western Digital Reds. So let's head on over to the next step, locate all of it, and we're going to use BTRFS for that buttery, smooth ability to use snapshots and stuff. All right, there we go complete. There's nothing on there so we can delete all data. And now we're cooking with a storage pool. This shouldn't take too long. Here's what we have right now. They told me that there are a few new apps coming soon and I'm really excited for the virtual machine manager. That means we're going to be able to install a bunch of VMs on here and that's when I'm going to need to get some more RAM. So I mean eight gigabytes of RAM will probably do a few virtual machines for what you know for what I'm doing. You can install a whole bunch of stuff on here. Maybe I'll make some tutorials on that. But right now we already have a bunch of fun stuff. I've installed photos so we're going to go through that one. Now these are just a bunch of pictures I took so that I put them all in here and there are a lot of them are really similar you know like there's too many that are really similar because a lot of times when I'm out there if it's dark I'll take five of the same shot to make sure that they, they, they're not blurry you know. So I think I got too many photos of the same of the same type. So we can come over here and click on tools and we actually have some good use of AI in my opinion. We can look for similar or duplicate photos right here. And I've already done that once, but it'll bring up all these photos and be like, these are very similar. And you can just like go through them, maybe zoom in, figure out which one you like the most. That's really handy. It organizes them by row. So <laughs> this is one here, there's too many of the same photo. And then we also have blurred photos. It'll tell you, okay, which photos are blurry. Yep, that one's blurry. That way you can just, you know, delete the, this. I don't, I don't need this blurry photo on, you know, clogging up space. Oh, uh, thanks, my old Skyrim photos are blurry, but they're just low res, that's all. <laughs> now I've also enabled some AI stuff. Now I didn't put any tags for these things, but it uses an AI algorithm to look through my photos and see which ones look like food. And it's doing an okay job. It hasn't gotten everything yet, so I think I need to let it search for a little bit longer, process a little bit longer. But yeah, it, it just looked at these and said, oh, this is food. Okay, and then put it in the food. So I now can search for something else. I want to search for, uh, I put all, okay, I've got all kinds of trees. Let's search for forest. Okay, we got forest scenario. Look at that, it's, it's detected that all of these are forest. I did not tag any of these. So the AI looked through here and said, yep, these are all uh, forest pictures. It'll automatically, if you can check mark, and it'll automatically download updates so that you can find new pictures. Now, I didn't catch some of these. Like, that's food right there. Maybe it doesn't know anything about Japanese food. I just uploaded these, so I haven't let it process. Probably, that's, but it's really cool that it, yeah, I grabbed all my. Now, this is cool because you can also share this with people and, and they don't have to have access to your NAS. Click over here, click on share, and then do public share. Have it valid for three days, say no password and allow people to download it, hit confirm. And now we've got a link. So this is just like, you know, when you're using one of the online services like Google Drive or something, you just copy the link and send it to somebody and they can look at your photo for the next three days and then it'll delete itself or the, I guess the, the link will delete itself. Now, one other thing I wanna mention about the whole AI thing, it's on your computer. The AI is installed locally. You're not using some remote thing and it's not monitoring anything that you're doing on your computer. The way this works is that whenever there's an update to the AI model, it's downloaded to your NAS and then it's run on your NAS. That way, nobody has access to your files. No one's scanning your files to train any AI models or steal your artwork or anything like that. You're just using these AI, AI models locally to identify patterns in your pictures and videos so that you can have them automatically organized into groups like food and street photography and forest or whatever nature. Uh, mine hasn't finished going through all of it and I'm sure we're gonna have some cool updates as we get new updated versions of the AI model. But again, it's all done on your own machine. So thanks very much, Ugreen, for doing that. I wanted to see how the video would work so I uploaded a very large 4K video for wandering around in the redwood trees. And I'll play it back right here inside the photos thing. And yeah, it's playing back nice and smooth. A lot of this because the connection's fast enough, but also the software has to be able to handle it. 
So as you can see here, we've got nice, smooth 4K playback right in the app. Can't wait till we get all those movie apps and stuff on here. That'll be nice. <laughs> Let's take a look at the task manager. This is a really well organized task manager in my opinion. Shows you all the stuff that's running right here. And then over here we've got our overview. CPU usage only 11% right now. GPU, memory, see what's being used. Only 2.13 out of the eight gigabytes that are installed. And then here's our network, hard disk, and our volumes. So the first thing you do is you have to set it up. BTRFS, four drives, RAID 5. There you go. So there's your hard disks. And we can check our you know, health test plan and bad sector warnings are turned on. So we're gonna get warnings about that. We can also plug up external hard drives so you can have backups of key folders and manage it all right here in your storage manager. Now, I've already set up a few shares, but I'll show you how we do that. When you come over here, your personal folder is where your photos go because each individual user will have a personal photo and they can have their own photos so that when they click on photos, it'll be different interface than yours with all of their photos. But then we have our shared folders over here. Now, these are the different shares on your network and you can push plus, do a new shared folder and then title it whatever you like. So I've created three. Now, let's say you wanted to map one of these network drives uh, on your Windows machine. Well, you just press Windows key R and then backslash backslash and the IP address of your NAS. Press enter and here's all of our shares. So let's map war and do map network drive and it'll add a list over here. T, sure. Finish. And here's what we got on work. I've got all of the footage from this NAS. <laughs> I put the, the footage of the NAS on the NAS. Clicking around with it. Yep. So there all that is. Now you can set these up. Say we got one for games or whatever. Um, I don't want any usage limits or anything. Create that. And I've got my name right here. I'm going to let myself read and write that. If you have other users, you can say, you know what? Prohibit that user or whatever. So you can set it up like that or you can just have user groups where you have like a set of rules for that group and then you throw people into it. So if you want to let some people access your games folder, we'll put them in that group and then give them a login. So all in all, the interface is really clean. Uh, we don't have an enormous amount of stuff yet. You can do manual installations. So that's an option right now. I think we're going to have a pretty cool ecosystem here. Um, and there's only really a few extra things that I want. I really want that virtual machine manager, but we do have sync and backup. So I'll install that. Now we have a couple different options here. You can sync it up with a remote NAS that's somewhere else. You can have a NAS at home and a NAS at the office and sync those up. Now, right now, the software is just letting us do remote sync with Ukraine NAS products, but coming soon, we'll have R-Sync, which is pretty much the industry standard. So you can sync it up with just about anything, including remote servers that are hosted by with other companies, you know, running other versions of Linux. Uh, even Windows, you can get R-Sync clients for everything. So you'll be able to sync this up with pretty much anything once the R-Sync implementation is finished. And then we also have the, the sync with your computer so you can back up different folders and whatnot. We can have it back up an entire computer here. Say like, you know what? This is the computer that we're on right now. Back up my entire C drive right there. That's pretty handy. Now with Linux, you usually don't need to worry too awful much about security, but we do have a security manager that you can install and do scheduled scans. So we can set up a scheduled scan for like Thursday, whatever, you do it once a week, I don't care, for Sunday night. And then select certain files, system files, we'll do system files, there, ignore, sure. And we'll do it uh, weekly. Now we've set up scans for Thursday. And we have an overview here that'll show us what's going on. Um, like I said, I don't think this is a huge deal for Linux stuff, but if you want the peace of mind, it is nice to have this. And we can also turn on real-time protection a little bit. See if that changed anything here with our task manager. If you got the resources, you may as well. Why not? For me, I'm looking forward to seeing what else they put into the app store. But I already like a lot of the stuff they're doing. I think the Photos app is great. I, like, I really like the fact that they've integrated AI in a way uh, that doesn't ruffle my feathers and does something very useful. So all in all, I think that there's a level of features you're going to get with this at this price point and a build quality you're going to get with this at this price point that you're not going to see with most of the competition and that's why i wanted to look at this i think it's really promising and don't forget 40 percent off from 326 to 327 so all those links are going to be in the description as well as the links to the kickstarter campaign so check it all out there i uh, hope you enjoyed watching this if there's anything you want to know in like in particular are there any like sort of tutorials i pretty well know my way around nas units these days 
So if there's anything in particular you want to know, let me know. And maybe I'll make another video on, you know, maybe DDNS. Or maybe how to run some virtual machines once their virtual machine software comes out. So just let me know what you want to see, and maybe we can do it. So thanks to you, Green, for sending over the NAS unit, and thanks to Western Digital for sending those hard drives. Unless you, Green, bought them and sent them over. I don't know. But thanks to them, yes. Uh, let me know what you think of this in the comments below. I'll see you there.